Hey, we're live. We skipped the video. <laughs> when we did that. <laughs> yes. Oh, well, we're live. We have no intro video. So how you doing, Mr. Hildebrandt? I'm doing fine. How are you doing, Keith? Uh, I am. I'm doing well. So it's been a couple weeks since we've. Yes, we've done one of these. You were busy last week doing, uh, Was doing uh, Kickstarter this? campaigns, right? Oh, that's right. And I painted yeah, so this. In the mean, I think I painted this in the meantime. It's a, it's a pinup called American in Paris. That Gene titled it. So that's done. Very nice. And Very nice. So what what uh, what was the Kickstarter about? Uh, you were on it, uh, Red Sonia. Uh, you know, and uh, the, I'm going to do a bunch of sketches. I mean, one of the one of the things that people are gonna are paying for are me doing this on a uh, you know a blank cover, a drawing similar okay, to cool. it. It won't be the same one all the time, something like that. So it's it's they'll be uh, they'll be getting a whole bunch of buying a whole bunch of stuff, and uh, and it's about the character they're reprint they're reprinting the Frank Thorne's take you know the the first book that Frank Thorne did, and with my with with my that that's not the cover. I did a uh, alternate cover for that book, which they'll be putting out, which Nick Barucci, uh, the owner of Dynamite, Dynamite Comics, uh, he had the concept of asking me if I would like to do a sort of a paraphrase on the Star Wars painting that Tim and I did. You know, Red Sonja in the position of the two principal figures in the foreground and, and the big head in the sky, you know. And, uh, and so I did that. And 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 they they put out it's doing very well, the Kickstarter is doing very well, so that's what that's about. Cool. And so if, if I if I have my information correct, it goes through the uh, the new year, right? Like fourteen more days on that campaign. Yeah. Yeah. So people still have time. They have time. So so anyway. Yes. Yeah, so anyway. you told me that you wanted to talk uh, about. Your gift for Gene is—is oh, yeah, is that the gift for Gene, oh, or is that? No, this, this <laughs> is uh, what I've been painting for the last week or so for Gene for a for Christmas present, which uh, I don't know if you can—is it here? Uh, can you see it? Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see. So, it, is that Gene with a sword? Yeah, that's there's Gene, and then she was she, she you know. Hey, look at we we she hasn't seen the painting, so I'm keeping that secret in terms of the look of it, the color I've used, and all that kind of stuff. But she actually, yeah, okay. you know, she posed for it, and you know, it was her basic concept. She said, "I want to be in the realm of like, uh, you know, the uh, uh, the vampire movies, the." Uh, the hell is it? What's it? That, Underworld? The Underworld? Underworld. Movie? My God. See, that's what happens with <laughs> you. You know what I mean? Underworld. She loves I love those series too. And she wants she wants something like that. And also I know that she she and I am too is a big fan of uh of Highlander. You know, that can be okay. only one. You know, and so that kind of like, you know, sort of idea mixed up together kind of thing. You know what I mean? So that's what this is. Very cool. And you can't Very see cool. it here, but perhaps you can see this dragon. She's standing on this sort of like dragon. Garden. Oh, okay, yeah, I couldn't, I couldn't make it so, out. It, it, you know, because Jean's, Jean's a, a dragon lady. She's born in the year of the dragon, and so she wanted a dragon in the picture. So that's kind of like, what that is. And so, in the in the color of light, I don't know, Jean, are you still here? She left. Um, she's supposed to sneak away so that she doesn't hear me talking about this. Like, and you know, you go through different concepts about. I love backlight. See, it's rim lit. You know, you get the low light coming from the bottom, which is whatever's going on down here, city wise, and all that. So you have this lower, warm light I wanted. Then there's a backlight I wanted. That's why I lit it. And that's why I intended to light it. And you know, I've done so many with a big moon in the sky up here. You know, backlighting it blue. And I said, Not yeah, so many yeah. moons, man. I mean, this is like I want to do something lightning. Lightning will be it. And then you go through. Well, what the hell should the lightning color be? And it, traditionally, you'd paint it like I would anyway, bluish, bluing up. Yeah, the purple. blue and the white or the yellow. Yeah. Yeah. And then I say, no, this is one of Gene's favorite colors, is this green. So I said, I'll make green like this. Okay. Yeah. That, and, <laughs> you know, just to have it be a different thing, you know? So this is what I'm doing. Well, it, it, it adds a personal, 
like a, yeah. a personal touch to it, right? Right. And so, yeah, so there it is. I got another couple of days on it and I'll be done with it. Very cool, man. So uh, Chris Fab says, Merry Christmas, Greg. Merry um, Christmas, Chris. He also wanted, wants to know when the, the Marvel book's coming out. Uh, <laughs> so we'll tell Chris right now that it is still coming out, but with everything going on this year, it has been been delayed. So as soon as uh, as soon as the, all of that is updated, uh, we'll let everybody know right. when that Marvel book is is coming out. So yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff. I mean, you know, we're talking about like I know Tashin, the German publisher, has just done a fantastic book. The thing weighs like 16 pounds. You know, it's like a 16 pound book on it's called Masterpieces of Fantasy. It's got all the greats are in there. I mean, you know, I mean, Frazetta, contemporary greats and, you know, people, you know, and it's a beautiful book. And in any event, they, they decided that they wanted Tim and me in the book too. And so there, we've got a section in this book, but it's a beauty. It's a fantastically produced book. I mean, the thing is overwhelming, you know? Yeah, I can't wait to see it. They, they do a great job. I mean, they, they took, they take books seriously, you know, like heavy duty yeah. books are really, I know, Helmut Newton, the photographer, they did, I remember they did a book of his work that was like, I don't know, four feet tall in this thick. And, you know, you, it like you needed a crane to get it, you know, to lift it up in a special stand that you bought that you could put the book on. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty crazy. Yeah. So, anyway. so I guess the questions, man, you know, so, you know, we were throwing around the ideas and just talking about just, you know, commissions in general and art as gifts, right? Like, you know, right. you, I, I know you do a lot of stuff for Gene and, you know, as, as gifts and things like that. Um, when you take on a project uh, of that nature, like when you know that someone is commissioning you specifically because they want to give that as a gift to somebody, mm -hmm. Like, are, is there any kind of special considerations that you take in? Like, are you trying to put a personal note for that person? You're kind of like reverberating. You froze. I don't know whether this is still live or not, but you, Keith, you've frozen. I'm not sure. I don't know what's going on right now. If I'm live, I'll answer, try to answer Keith's question. That is to say, yes, I take into account, well, what the person wants. If it's a commission for someone that they're commissioning for themselves, uh, Gene will ask them and, and, and we'll go through all the questions with them. And Into the painting or is it just like you ahead of a car? You've been freezing up and you froze for a long time, Keith. You're frozen up again. So, again, I'm, I'm, if this is going live, I'm going to still keep trying to answer the question. The In private commissions, I take into account as much as I can, obviously, that's what it's all about, is what the, the person uh, wanting the commission wants me to do. And then uh, I'll... Hi, you froze up there. I don't know whether... Keith? I'm back. I don't know whether I was still live or not. So I just kept kind of like talking. Yeah, I think, yeah, you stay live. So you just I keep do. talking. I was still, yeah. I was trying to answer your question about the uh, taking into account what, what a person when they, when I'm doing a commission. Yeah. You know? So you, yeah, it's, uh, and yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me at all, Greg? Right now, I just heard that, but you freeze up a lot, and then I can't. I, mean, I don't. I don't know what. Thing is, all this is all yeah. brand new to me. I get. Yeah. Again. Are you there? Yeah, you just keep talking. You. It, oh, you're I just live, keep talking. No matter so I mean, what. of course, I take into account the, the the request of the person who wants the commission, 
we gene will get everything out of them that they want, and then I'll bring whatever to it that is that I want to bring to it, invent ideas for them if they don't are not clear as to what like the setup. I'm mean, you know like one man wanted his wife a painting of his wife in a pinupy type thing with a car of his favorite oh, one of his beautiful car that he owned. It was like a a Rolls Royce uh, boat back. It was a wooden back of a boat, and so he wasn't sure. I think she used to be in showbiz to some degree or something. She was a performer. So I kind of like took the period of the car and created a sort of a Buzz, Busby Berkeley background. Buzz Berkeley was the great director of musicals back in the 30s, you know. And I kind of like okay. did a take on that. That just my throwing in. And he loved it. And so that's what I did, you know. Certain gifts, like I just did. Okay, very cool. I just did a painting for my son, Greg Jr., he wrote a screenplay some years ago on Indiana Jones when they were he got wind that they were starting they were going to do that that Crystal Skull movie, and he did his own take mm -hmm. on a script, knowing pretty much that they weren't were looking they weren't accepting scripts from the outside at all, but he just wanted to do it. So he wrote this great I thought it was fantastic. It was Indiana Jones and the Staff of Moses. He went back to the original Judaic you know. Uh, religious object thing and so Gene had the idea for his 50th birthday to take that script and do like a movie poster for it so I did cool. I did a painting of and, and incorporated it into the his story he has Indy's father as we all know played by Sean Connery in the in the in the other movie and so Gene and suggested well Gregory should be Indy and I should be the father. So uh, Greg came. He knew we were, we were going to do this, and he posed for me, and I, you know, with the, and, and I posed, and so I just painted that picture for him, like with the title and the lettering and all that kind of stuff, you know. And so, but that's a thing that mainly Gene and I worked out, and then I executed it, you know. So it's, you know, it's all over the place when I do commissions. Yeah. But you, so you're trying to make it uh, somewhat personal to, you know, like to Gregory or, you oh, know, yeah. to put this was some kind personal, of, you know, yeah, definitely. Yeah, and, and sentiment into it. And, you know, the one thing about with art um, is that, you know, it's going to, it's one, it's going to be different from anything else that anybody has. Right. <laughs> you know, Doesn't they don't have, me, uh, yeah. Yeah, you know, if they're if they're buying it, it they're getting a, a one of a kind thing. It's not right. like, oh, you just go to Macy's and pick sure. up a coat or well, it's clearly or whatnot. Uh, a handmade object and only one of a kind. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Now, have I have this is might sound strange, but like, have you ever felt um, weird at all about like giving art as a gift, or is it just like uh, a natural no, I thing? Always, so I, I've, I've been doing it since I was a kid. I mean, t Tim and I, my brother, my twin brother, Tim, we would make all of our Christmas gifts for all of our whole family. My cousins and aunts either build, make something, uh, I forgot, you know, like objects of some kind, cut out of uh, a wood on, on a jigsaw and or little drawings or paintings or cards. Since I was a kid, I would figure out, well, this is the ultimate gift that I can give is something that I can make with my own hands as opposed to only, you know what I mean, just going and buying something. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I'm not making one thing better than the other. I'm just saying yeah. for me, it was always like the ultimate thing that I could give. That's coming, you know, it's hyper personal, you know? Yeah. For, um, for me, I don't, I don't know if it comes through like being self-conscious about my, about my stuff or what but i always felt <laughs> like, wasn't. like bad or guilty why um that's interesting why and you know i get a, a lot of the stuff that i gave away uh i did it when i couldn't necessarily afford to buy gifts for everybody you know so it was like oh here just here's a painting you know here's a painting um so uh, i yeah i i, I, yeah, I, I see like, what you're saying but Come on, man. It, 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 it's, uh, it's the ultimate thing that you can really get. It's totally personal. So it's you. You know, it's coming out of your hands. 
Yeah. yeah, I ended up uh, doing one for a woman this year. You know, she contacted me and said, hey, could you can you do this for my son? And, um, so so I did it and she flipped out, you know, and it, it's kind of the first time that ever hit me of like, yeah, oh, oh wow. You know, like you felt maybe someone will because you felt that it wasn't enough. Yeah, you know, that I wasn't it, again, spending just, money, going out and spending dollars on something. Yeah. yeah. Well, what's what's a value? You know what I'm saying? That's <laughs> true. Everybody, true. you can go to the store and buy anything. Anybody can buy that. I mean, anybody can buy it. You as an artist, this is this is it. This is one of a kind. This is you personally, you know? I think yeah. it's <laughs> I think it's the ultimate thing that I can give somebody. That's the way I look at it. I mean, yeah, yeah, I'm not saying that necessarily that what I give them is great or I, I, I grew, you know what I mean? I think it's a, a huge, magnificent object. No, I, I don't even think that because, you know, I, my work, you know, like you, we're always about, it's not good enough ever. You know, you're always trying to get it right. And, <laughs> it, it, you know, but the, the, what I mean is that it's, it's the most personal thing you can give, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That there's a little, yeah, whether somebody's commissioning the piece or you're giving as a gift, it is. You're not going out and buying a. There's not a hundred of them around, you know. Right. And, you know, and it's, not, it's all not you. a whole lot. Right. It's all you. It's 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 you. It's the ultimate to me. That's the ultimate gift that I could give. Yeah. So you know that I whole have, the what? Go ahead. Go ahead. No, but the whole conversation, you know, about that, it may not be. We're not. You either you or I are, are saying this is the greatest thing in the world, but because you always have that. I mean, we talk about this all the time, I think, right? That yeah. it's you're never satisfied. I mean, this thing yeah. you, 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 I like, I approach everything I do with great expectation. You know, ultimate, you know, this is, and you know, not that it's going to be great, but you really, there's just this enthusiasm that you jump into it with. And as you move along with it, all the questions and doubts start to arise. Wait a minute. Oh, that was, that, is that? Well, wait a minute. You know, no, there's all this stuff that, that goes on in your mind, I think, that you just question it. And ultimately, and I, I go through a series of pragmatic things. Wait a minute. Is the comp number one is composition, right? Yep. It's the positioning within the, the here's the picture plane. The, the rectangular shape in this case, a vertical rectangle. I chose the picture to paint it in the form of a vertical rectangle. Probably why? Because it's movie postery, verticals, and book mm -hmm. covers and comic book covers are vertical. So that's a kind yeah. of a design choice you make right off the bat. All right, so there's your picture plane. Now, positioning of the objects within that picture plane, that's predominant. Where do you position your objects? Is it if you stick this over here, it's way over too far. If her head's over here, it's way over too far. So there's a positioning that I, I kind of go by to put that primary center of interest right there. Then all secondary centers of interest all surround it. So you, you analyze that. You're analyzing, is that right? Yeah. That's I wouldn't change that. Okay, well, that's okay. Then I go to the next thing. Okay, drawing the actual drawing of all the objects, the figure, the lightning, the clouds, the sword, the dragon. How is the drawing of it, the shape of it, the structure of it, the proportion of it? You know, yeah, that, 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 yeah. I wouldn't change that. <laughs> so you know, I do that. Do you do that? I mean, I do that all the time. Uh, you know what? No, that's a good lesson for me, though, so that when I'm in my head about it, I'll, I'll do the check. I'll do the checklist. Okay, is this good? Composition. This Composition good? number one. That's that's number Howard Pyle, right? The granddaddy of American yeah. illustration. Compositions. Boom. That's it. If you can have a, you can you can paint. You can be a a, a great painter. The deep, beautiful. Everything about a beautiful painting. Light color drawing. But if the composition's off, if the if the center of interest is off to the bottom right, no corner. It, 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 you're not, there's not that punch or power or, you know what I mean, dramatic appeal. So that's number one. Yeah. So you go to that, go through that list. Those composition, drawing, 
drawing of all the elements. You know, just the way <laughs> yeah. it's structured, the way they're designed. The next thing is lighting for me. How is it lit? Where's the light coming from? What are the sources of the light? And what color are those lights? Then it's color. And color is then, we you know, affected by the color of the light. So, but th th there's your checklist. It's about what, four things? Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll keep that in the <laughs> noggin when I... And you go through it, you end up, you say, well, it all seems all right, I guess. I don't know what it is. Something's about it, though. It is just... So there's something that you have internally that you are aiming at. I don't think you're ever going to get it. So I know that for a fact. I mean, I, I, I used to drive myself crazy as a young guy, throwing stuff in a corner, you know, and, oh, I quit, I quit, all that crap. And so you finally get, wait a minute, this whole nagging thing about that it's not right yet, that's just, that's the process. That's part of the process you go through. That's what it's all about. That's what keeps you going in a way, pursuing that carrot that's dangling out in front of you, you know, that you, yep. you really, intellectually, you know you're never going to get it. You, you really know that. So you accept yeah. that. Oh, I'm never going to get it, but I'm still driven to try to get it, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is very <clears throat> cartoony in a way, you know, <clears throat> which it always is, right? It's yeah. the animal with the stick with the carrot and the dog's pursuing or whatever is pursuing the carrot, the rabbit's pursuing the carrot. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like you're, you're <laughs> a dumb bunny. You know I mean? the carrot, yes. You're, you're sort of a dumb bunny, you know, kind of like thing, you know? <laughs> anyway, whatever. So, yeah, hey, so we're coming up on the Christmas season, yep. right? And obviously, what, for the last 16 years, 17 years, you have been associated with probably the biggest um, band that is associated with this season, which yeah. is obviously the Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Yeah. So, you know, this year is a little bit different in that there was no tour, you know, no one's touring. Yeah, um, it, really sad. I mean, no, well, right, the whole year of it. Yes, and I feel really terrible about it. We have there's been no tour, so therefore the program that I do, I do all the art for. Gene designs mm -hmm. the program for the yearly show, and that's not here. We didn't do it, but Friday night they're doing a live concert this Friday. So which okay, is yeah, that's the the live stream, right? Yeah, the live stream, which is a first of a kind that they'll they've ever done. So we're all kind of like anticipating that with great expectation to see how that works and what it feels like, you know. Of course, we know that the live thing is always like a whole other special thing. But I think this should be great. I think I'm, I'm you know, looking forward to it. But the TSO yeah, for right. me has been, I've always loved music. I mean, I've, I've, I've loved music since I was a kid and worked to music all my life. And when I discovered their music, which was sort of magical in a way. I don't know if I've ever talked about that. You... Uh, we haven't talked about it on this live stream, but uh, I was just, I was working with you 20 years ago or however long ago now um, when, when all of this, this came about, Yeah. you know, and it is again, one of those stories of, you know, a fate, yeah, fate, oh. destiny, uh, what to call it, which is magic. I, I it really, and it, it, to me, it's like Gene and I were wrapping Christmas presents. It was like 2003, I think it was, and we put put Christmas music on music and on the CD player while we work. You know, we're listening yeah. to all you know, Frank Sinatra, you know, the great Christmas songs of the centuries, and you know, all every you know, all kinds of stuff. And then I go to reach. And there's behind the the player, there's a disc, uh, you know, a CD, still in shrink wrap. I lean and pick it up, and I says, Trans-Siberian Orchestra, Christmas Eve and other stories. What the heck is this? I had no idea. Somebody had given it to me, and I'd never played it. I put it on the rack. It must have fallen down. And, I, and, and you know, and I, I, we peeled it open. I said, should I play this? Now let's go back to Sinatra. Well, wait a minute. Let's put this on. So I put it on. Gene and I kept rapping, and holy mackerel, it was like, whoa. 
it, it, you could see there was a story. I hadn't read the libretto or anything, but you could tell something was happening. But the music, this, this combination of rock and classical, traditional, incredibly done, very emotional. And we put it on again. I played, we played like three times while we were at the presence. Then I, I had a studio that I had several other artists in. And I went into yeah. the studio and I played it. And I said, you guys, you guys have heard that you haven't heard anything yet. You're going to hear the best Christmas album ever. I played it. And one of my friends said, wait a minute, a buddy of mine sees them every year at the Beacon Theater in New York City. And so he calls this guy. We put him on a speakerphone and he says, oh, my God, you got to see him live. Oh, the, the pyro and, and the laser and the light at the show and everything is amazing. And so he's about, have you heard Beethoven's Last Night? And I said, what's that? Well, it's a rock opera they recorded. And I, I've always been a Beethoven nut since I was a kid. And so I went out and got it and played it. And it completely took me over. Totally. I no, I never worked this way. So I'm at that studio. I'd come home and Gene and I would be up and I'd come down he, here to my studio in the house. She'd go up to bed and i put the disc on and i start doing sketches out of it. i just listen to the music and draw and draw and draw. And literally every night, I'm doing this now till three in, in the morning. Like every night for a month or more. And, and I'm just completely taken by this. And I, and I come out of my stupor with a big stack of artwork, color roughs and comps and sketches and drawings. <laughs> and, and I get practical and I say, I show it to Jean. She says, what the heck is this? And I explain it to her. I play the music and I say, then should we do something with it? Like, you know, I try to get like, maybe I should do something with this, you know? And she says, well, who is it? I didn't even look and see who did, uh, producer, Paul O'Neill and... Jean gets the telephone number at a recording studio in Manhattan. And she gives it to me. And I says, are you going to call? And she says, no, no, no. She does all the business calls, right? That's as we were working yeah. together. And she said, no, no, no. This is a fanboy thing. You got to call. So <laughs> I, which it was. I mean, I called this number. And a guy on the phone, I asked. And I said, is Paul O'Neill there? He said, no, he's not here today. And he said, well, what's your number? What's your name? I give him my name and number. The next day in my studio, the phone rings and this voice is, is Greg Hildebrandt there. And I said, this is him. And he said, this is Paul O'Neill. I can't believe you called me. I've been a fan of your work since the Tolkien calendars you did in the 70s. So it was like, what? So we're on the phone. You're the man. No, you're the man. No, you're the man. No, you're one of those kind of things. You're, you know, and it's like, that was it. That's how we met. We got together. I brought all the art of Beethoven in at a, at a, restaurant into the city with Gene and he went nuts and we started uh, we started working together that's how that yeah happened. that you know knowing you and being around that situation for all the years I mean that, that the T, the TSO job while it is a job it sure. was so much more for you like you became really really closely connected with Paul like as on a personal level, you and Gene both were like best friends with Paul, you know. Oh, totally. He was a brother. He was a soul brother, you know, yeah. basically, to both for both of us. And we were on a wavelength that was amazing. I mean, we would get on the phone. You'd call to talk about something specific. And we'd end up on the phone for seven hours. I mean, literally seven hours <laughs> discussing everything in the universe. Paul was that kind of a man. He... He, he, it wasn't just music, it was economics and politics and philosophy and history. And I mean, you, you yeah, it was like amazing. And we would work out the art for the, for the programs and start with single pages. And I finally evolved into four page fold out spreads. And they would be a lot of it, some of it would be associated with the various rock operas, the Christmas rock operas. But there would rock theater. Paul chose yeah. to call it rock theater. And there would be other ideas. Just I was always like trying to get underneath of what what what's what are what are they about? What's Paul about? What's TSO, Trans Siberian Orchestra, about? What are they after, you know? And it's this beautiful positive message, not cutesy saccharine, nothing you know, Paul being the Irish the the, the 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 Irish poet, you know, the the intense Irish poet that he was, and you know he puts you through the 
emotional drama of, into the lower depths, so to speak, and then but ascending, you know, and yeah. that classic format was so appealing, you know, and it just well, yeah, we were just you know it was an amazing experience, one of the high points of my career of my life really. So. Yeah, I mean, you guys really just like you said, you know, you considered him a brother. You, uh, he, yeah. You know that the match just came together, just artistically, intellectually, just. Yeah. Yeah, he you know. he was a sweetheart. I mean, more. You know, I could name like on on a couple of hand on a one hand one and a half hands the people in my life that have been, you know. Guides, as it were. I mean, I I I knew I had a theologian friend many years ago who put it that way. He said, you know, these people show up in your life as guides almost, depending on how you choose to want to believe it. You know, I, you know what I'm yeah. saying. And that kind of like point the way. And he was one of them for me, you know? Yeah, I'm sure. And, you know, I mean, we, you know, you and I have talked about this on a, on a, on a personal level, but, you know, the difficulty of carrying on with the art, you know, after he, after he passed. Oh, and God. Overwhelming. You know, it, but at the same, it, it's, got to be gut-wrenching for you and gene you know but at the same time recognizing that uh you know a adam and the band are yeah. still there to to get his message of hope yeah. out because like you yeah. said you know yeah it's it's there's obviously a christmas theme to the music it's played they do christmas time concerts but the underlying message is a message of hope. It's universal. That transcends. It, it transcends him. Yep. And yep. while that band is still going on, you're still a piece of it to get his message of hope out into the world. Right. 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 And so, yeah, it's very, mean, like you say, it transcends, transcendent, and it's universal. The yeah. What's behind it is is universal. It's not just you know, one religion, you know, it, it, yeah. yeah, the impact is, is global and, and multicultural, I think, multi-religious. And yeah, it, it is about a positive um, message of, of, of uh, for humanity, you know, for all of us. Yeah, there's a lot of reconciliation that he, you know, that he talks about in there, and, you know, and the coming together and yeah. Yeah, overwhelming. Uh, it's it's, it's uh, he's still you know here you know with me, you know. Yeah. Like my brother is my my t Tim is still like that with me. You know, I think that you know as long as you talk about them and, and think about them, you keep them alive. You know. Yeah, you know, with with that, you know, it's like I I hit the twin thing on a different level. Uh, you know, because I, I have twin boys, right. <laughs> you know, yeah. Yeah. As, as you well know, you've met yep. them. Um, and I just, you know, when I, I, just, I feel for you so deeply on that level, because I see how close they are and, and how they interact. And, you know, with you, yeah, I mean, you know, he, he was your brother, but he was also your work partner. Oh yeah, he would start. Out, we we would he would be painting on one side of the picture. I'd be painting on the other side. At the same time, you know, that's the way that worked. <laughs> it was an amazing. Uh, it was like one person when when we worked together. It was like a single unit, so to speak. You know what I mean? One person. Yeah, and you know, it, it, it's crazy. You know, I'm I'm glad that I had the chance to meet him you know, and get, get to know him as, as well. And, you know, just hanging out in the studio and, you know, painting alongside you guys and getting some feedback and, and all that. And, you know, he could be incredibly funny. <laughs> oh, he was, he had a great sense of humor, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. Uh, no, he, it was, <laughs> yeah, he was hysterical at times, <laughs> Yeah, so you know, it's uh, it's just yeah, interesting. You know, it's like you're talking about those bonds of you know you have had it with, with Tim, who was your real brother. Yeah, 
you know, and, and your twin. I've been fortunate and then to you have, hit it have, again. I've been fortunate to have great people well, for great people in my life. I mean, you know, I, I'm not, I know they're my parents, number one, it, you know, they were amazing. I mean, you know, being born in 1939 and growing up in Detroit, Michigan, in a, you know, working class environment and world, they never diminished us being, wanting to do art and being artists. They supported it 1 billion percent. In fact, my mother, yeah. this is a lady that, you know, went through the depression and who was, like I say, coming from this working class world, she, the, the, the single biggest thing that I can remember from her literally hammering it into Tim and mine's head was your imagination is the most valuable thing you possess. Which like, you know, I mean, that's, hey man, that's our quote for the day. We forgot to start off with a quote. Yes, that's the quote. That's for my the mother's day. quote. Your imagination <laughs> is the most valuable thing you possess. That yes. I mean, and she nurtured that. You know, it wasn't that she just only said it. She kept that alive in us. And yeah, that's fantastic. And also, the second biggest thing from her was. Don't follow the crowd. Think for yourself. Which is pretty amazing coming from the world that she came out of, you know? Those two things to me. Yeah, your mom was a devout Catholic, right? She was a Catholic, so, you know. Not, when I say devout, they, were, they weren't like fanatical, you know what I mean? They did yeah. the bare minimum. They went to Mass on Sunday, yeah. confession and communion once a year at Easter, which you had to do as your Easter duty, they called it, you know? That kept you in the Catholic Church. And other than that, that was about it. No meat on Friday. They kept yeah. those standards, but, but there was no, uh, you know, craziness about it, you know? It, 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 yeah, but it was, so, but to come up with that, hey, think for yourself. Yeah, that was, you know, I don't mean to in insinuate that. anything negative there, but. Um, yeah, that, that was very unusual. Because then once I really started to go think for myself as I got older, you know, <laughs> into the 60s. Then she was like, "All oh, right, maybe I'm, you're going a little too far with your." <laughs> with your you yes. Know? Hey, we got a couple questions, man. Just because you know we were, yeah. You know, you're talking about Tim, and you started talking about, you know, that you guys could start on one side of the painting, the other start yeah. on the other, and you, and you meet in the middle. Um, uh, Rob B here asked, like, like how, did you guys divide up responsibilities consistently? Like, like, how did you divide responsibilities? It, there was no set ritual, so to speak. I mean, you know, it, it say we do an illustration, say the Lord of the Rings, the big stuff that we're known for. You know what I mean? We read the books. Yeah. We all read them and we marked off all the scenes individually. Tim read the books. I read the books. We marked off all the scenes. You end up with a thousand scenes to illustrate. Then we have a discussion between the two of us. Okay, which one? Arrive at a system of how to approach it. This is all verbal strictly verbal between yep. the two of us analyzing it like anybody would who's trying to work out something you know like what's how do you approach it oh for the rings good guys and bad guys or that's the division interior exterior cool light warm light those are the kind of breakdowns that we did initially to yep. arrive at because we had like a matter of we had to paint all that stuff like in a six months we had that yeah the first calendar so we'd arrive at that really fast and then once we get down to the scene tim would draw some sketches for a layout Say the healing of Eowyn in, in the second calendar, or, and and I would draw some, and there would be slight angle angle shifts, and we'd look at them both and choose one. Say, okay, that that's set up. Either Tim could draw it or I would draw it. You know what I'm saying? We choose a yeah. setup. The, again, the composition. What what's the setup? And the lighting. We talk about the lighting, and then then we would do a more say a more refined sketch, and agree on that, and then. If it's for the client, we would then take that in, in this case, to Valentine Books, show them the sketches. They say, go ahead. And then we would get models now and pose everything and take pictures. And we're doing that together. We're doing that whole lighting setup and shooting together. And then we go over that. We do a finished drawing together. Tim would work on one. Say we have two or three drawings going, setups going at the same time. He'd be working on one. I'd be working on one. We'd switch them back and forth. Till it got to the final painting, and we transfer it to the surface we were painting on with the Lord of the Rings. It was on masonite panels. We would gesso the panel with white 
gesso, yeah. sand it down, transfer the drawing with carbon paper, like with a ballpoint pen, and then sit back and look at it and start to lay a palette out. All right, the moonlight, what's going to be our color breakdown of the moonlight? Raw sienna and white for the highlight of the moon, possibly with yellow medium for the final whitish white highlight, then phthalo blue mixed into that, and then ultramarine. So we discuss our color breakdown, mix a series of values for the moon together. One guy would be mixing it. The other guy would be sitting in the back watching him as he applies it. Say, no, 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 too much yellow, too much this, not enough this, <laughs> like that kind of thing. And yeah. and then it got to a point, though, I mean, over the years where we would instantly know moonlight, we knew the exact colors we were going to break the thing down in, you know, for this particular thing, for, say, the Lord of the Rings again, you know, or firelight or candlelight or sunlight, you know. Yeah. Late sun, noonday sun, early sun, you know, we do all the color breakdowns to the distance. And, the, and the, a lot of it was verbal, and then we would, we would, like I say, start to paint one. One of us would start to paint on one picture, another guy would start to paint on another picture, and we'd switch them back and forth. We we mix up a palette of, of acrylic on sheets of aluminum foil, which I still do. Series of paints, piles of paint. Say if you take all, all the colors of this lightning, there's yeah. white, yellow, and white. Uh, white and permanent green light, white and phthalo green, white and phthalo blue, white and ultramarine, purple. I mix a series of values stepping from the highlight color, stepping down as it gradually gets darker. Succinct piles of paint that we then put in Tupperware containers so that Tim could take it home or I could take it home and work out of that. And I yeah. still, we, we evolved that kind of method of mixing colors up for every single object in the picture. A series of values from the highlight to the shadow. And, and that just, just helped keep the consistency of whoever was applying the paint right. where. Right. And consistent. And I still do that. I still mix paint up that way. I know I go yeah. from, say, the true color of the object, which is this cadmium red medium. That's the true color of the object. Yeah. Now, I move towards a highlight color. Two highlight colors in this case, the green and the warm light coming from below, which is a yellowy orange light coming from below. So I know I'm heading towards that highlight with the red in, in terms of this yellow orange light from below. And I know I'm heading towards this green highlight that's coming from the behind. So it's all so it's like sci it's very sci a scientific approach you're a analyzing yeah, oh that was a great quote oh yeah just in, in this line we talk about quotes here's one from leonardo in regards to this kind of more scientific approach to painting he, he we tell the students first study science then follow with practice based on science the painter who draws by practice and judgment of the eye without the use of reason is like the mirror that reproduces within itself all the objects which are set opposite to it without knowledge of the same. So you, it's like painting not just what your eye is telling you, yeah. but what your mind is telling you. And we, we, we got that from early on when we went to the six months of art school where the, the color and design class said if there's a warm light on a subject, there's a cool shadow. If there's a cool light on a subject, there's a warm shadow. So that's just a that's a basic platform of understanding that we went by, that I go by. So it's like, you, in order to paint anything, you have to un, I have to understand what the hell's going on. Yeah. Not so only I, I've got a question for you. I got a question for you. Mm -hmm. um, okay, I've seen you know enough of your work combined and your works individual that I could clearly distinguish between a you know a Greg Hildebrandt painting and a Tim Hildebrandt painting. But when it's a Greg and Tim, a brother's painting, it is its thing, right? Right, it's by itself. Yeah, separate. When 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 you look at them, can you, 
I'm, it might be hard to remove your rem, your memory from it, but can you tell that if Tim did the heavy lifting and the drawing versus you doing the heavy lifting and the drawing, can you tell the difference? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know that anyone else can. <laughs> so. Totally. Yeah, I can. Yeah, yeah absolutely. But you see what I mean about, I don't know if that gets too vague for people watching about the Leonardo quote. It's like about talking about not just, you don't draw and paint just what your eyeballs telling you. Because your eyeballs yeah. telling you, your eyes telling you that I don't see a cool shadow with that warm light on that object. I don't see that that's cool. Yeah. Know that it is. Don't know that it is. Just no. know that it is period. End of story. That's it. That's the way light works in nature. You know, now, it becomes an analysis project of, of your own. Well, what's the color of that cooler shadow? You know, yeah. And yeah. that's a whole learning process thing that you can go through. But if you accept that as a fact, that that's just the way it is, and then you run with that and then continue to study and analyze, you know, you, you yeah. get. Hey, which, which one of you posed for Saruman? Look, staring into the light bulb. Is that yeah, you or Tim? A friend of mine posed for that. Oh, it was a friend. <laughs> poor guy that a poor guy that I said, okay, stare into the light bulb. <laughs> so he stared into the light. It was only a fifty watt light bulb. What the hell? So, but he has, he saw purple for a week. <laughs> <laughs> so that I mean, was it's from. Like, I always joke. I make you suffer for my art. Yes. We all <laughs> suffer for your art. Posing is a whole other story. I know a lot of illustrators always say, oh, no, 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 I don't, I don't pose models. You know, the BS. What a bunch of BS yeah. that was. I mean, they always try to kind of like, I got bigger muscles than you got because I can do that all in my head. Well, so I usually tell people, well, it looks like it. Go get a model. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can tell. I, can I tell. mean, I'm not saying that you can't do great artwork without using a model. Many, we, many people do. I'm not saying that. But when you're doing this kind of stuff, you know, I more so-called realistic. You need yes. Nature does it a lot better than I can. That's the way I see it. You know, yeah. When you're hitting the multiple light sources, particularly, absolutely. You know, you, you get the shape you, of the object. You can you fake know? it. Yeah, you can, it can be faked, but faking it is never going to look as accurate as seeing the real thing. You know, no, I can't. I mean, maybe there are people who can do that. I, I, I can't. I. I I prefer the real thing. It's in front of me because there's so much stuff happens that you're not. Look at all the folds here. You know what I mean? Like in a shirt, you know, the, the way light hits it and everything, it's got its own thing that's there that the way nature works, you know, you can fake that kind yeah. of stuff. Yeah, yeah, sure you can. But to me, like I say, again, nature does it a lot better than I can. So why not, you know, why not use it? Reference it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I don't know, what the hell were we talking about before? Guides. My mother. Yes. People have shown up in my life like that. That fortunately they 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 come they point the way I in in that point you know they're you know they're not statues standing there but I'm saying they're they provide insight and you know that help me out to move to the next place where I move to so no, none of us do it alone you know that's the, that's the thing for me it's all in interconnected tapestry you know yeah. we're all interwoven well not not only just what i believe that on a, on a grander scale of philosophically that people talk about the past well when are you going to forget about that you know remember pearl harbor you know the holocaust yeah. the jewish holocaust the same thing as the american holocaust uh when are you going to stop talking about that stuff? When are you going to forget that? You know, oh, oh, is there a time frame on this? Do what, what, When do I? No, I don't see that. Like, time. I'm trying to get. I don't know what the hell I'm, I'm trying to get. Time to me is the past, present, and future are like a tapestry that's all woven together. There is no distinct separateness of any of. You know what I mean? We're all yes. interconnected and interlocked, like a like a, a, a tapestry. You know, past, yeah. present, and future. Everything is important. Everything affects everything else. You know, I, I don't know where that was, but anyway, I had these great guides like that. You know, that really 
for me, they kind of like elevated my consciousness, various forms and ways and manners, you know. And I've been real fortunate like that. Just, yeah. And so, you know, we're going back to, to Paul, right? You know, we're yeah. talking about Paul and you Paul and, and, Neil, and yeah. making that connection and combining your both of your art, you know, because TSO is the music. Um, TSO is the stage show, really. I mean, s seeing that band live is un unreal. It's incredible. You know, they, it, they put on a show. It, it's the but it's the whole show. It's light. It's color. It's movement. It's a whole display that's fantastic. Everything. But there is that that then the next element again, which is your art which, you know, that you and, you know, it was it, what you produced, right, for those, for the programs and uh, for the covers and the interiors and for the stories and all that. Um, that stuff was just as important to Paul for the telling of the story as, as anything, you know. Yeah, like, there's yeah. a lot of thought and a lot of energy and effort um put into that stuff you know the not traditional rock band programs where you get a couple flashy uh pictures of the band jamming out and it's just kind of all put together and then and well and sold. That, that when 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 i first did the first cover we we weren't producing it gene wasn't involved yet she was only involved on the level of being you know my agent and, you know and then becomes friends with paul then finally she said the, the, paul wasn't happy with the programs that were being done and generally speaking, you know, rock programs, they, they banged them out. Yeah. I mean, they, nobody looked at it as anything major, you know, in terms of a work of art by itself. So Gene, yeah. she said, wait a minute, let me let me do this. He said to Gene, what do you know about rock programs? She says, not a damn thing. <laughs> why, why do I have to know anything about it? I'm talking about production. You know, she's an artist and she has artistic sense and a design sense. And she was a publisher for producing really high quality books, Unicorn Publishing. And... Yeah. So she's let me do it. He said, okay. And so she put one together and it was like high quality paper printing. Uh, it, 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 it was amazing as an, it, the object was an end in itself, a work of art, a, a collectible item, you know, that was the way to approach it. Like a book in itself. You know? Yeah. And he got that completely. And we all were together in that. But then I remember talking about the art being used for multiple purposes. One year, Everybody was being quiet. Gene wasn't telling me, and I, we got to the show here in New York. And Paul says, "Come with me to the command center. That's the booth in the middle of the hall where the whole operations run out of all the electronics." And he's stand over here. And as the show started, in one number, it starts with all my artworks on the screens, flashing around all over the place in sync with the music. And I was like flabbergasted. I was like totally blown away. And I mean, literally to the point of tears, I'm standing there with tears are flowing down my face to see this. And he was, we were, he's hugging me and we were, it was, I'm, I'm getting that way right now. You know? Yeah. That's awesome, man. That's very cool. I can't, I can't even imagine like the, the experience of that and, yeah, and it, seeing it, that happen. It, it, the design of the show, Brian Hartley does the, the visual stuff. The guy's a freaking genius. The the the, the, the selection, the choice, the, the movement, and it gradually expanded the visual aspect of the show to the last year of it so far. And of course, we're hoping next year to be out again. Was just this huge screens that became so integral to the whole show, and it, so it's it, it's everything together. You know, it's everything. It's the whole schmear. It's fantastic. So we've got some someone's chi chiming in about your your clothes, and they wonder why uh, have you ever invested in paper towels rather than using your clothes? Sure, but I mean, I find <laughs> that it's easier to do this. I kind of like paint. And paint. I put a paper towel on my lap or, or a towel on my lap, and it ends up on my pants anyway. So I finally said, "The hell with it." So I just use as clothes start to get you know older and worn out, t-shirts and whatnot. I just use them to paint, and that's all. It's a, it's a far more economical way to actually, you know, because you're using the same 
right clothes over and over again as the painting rag look, uh, saves a few trees some some people <laughs> can say that you know when they when get it oh man like that's a fan that's as good as jackson pollock <laughs> well <laughs> yeah but it, it's not as big though <laughs> So yeah. uh, we have one other question, and then I, I want to go back to uh, TSO. But one other question: um, Did have you did you and Tim ever get into like, uh, you know, when you were working out lighting and things like that? Were there ever disagreements about how lighting should work that escalated, or were you guys pretty much in sync? Or well, I mean, most of the time we were in sync because the lighting was dictated by the scene that you were illustrating. If you know what I mean? If you made a yeah. choice of a scene out of a book, say, I'm talking about illustration because that's what we did together, illustration, was you made a choice of a scene that you're going to illustrate by a fireplace where you know that there's a fire in a fireplace. So you know instantly the lighting setup. Now it becomes a matter of, well, do you want some edge light on the on it? You know, coming through a window, say, from outside, and if that shouldn't that be maybe bluish? You know, we... It, but you, you can see... The scene you're choosing to illustrate, uh, I know I'm repeating myself, generally dictates the lighting. But if it's not, did you ever like? Scene, did you ever butt heads or like this person asked? I guess they heard a rumor that you guys butted head about lighting so much that you ended up tossing the painting across the room or something. That no, happen? that I think the, the, it wasn't like we were butting heads about lighting. No, no, it was nothing about that. We tossed the painting across the room because we couldn't get what we were trying to get at. Not it wasn't a, it wasn't a conflict between Tim and me. It simply was the thing was turning out like a piece of crap. What? <laughs> I can't stand this junk. We would freak out. You know what I mean? No, it, we're got always you. That. So it wasn't it wasn't a budding no, of the heads no, no, no. of the brother. No, no, never. There was no fight about that at all. I mean, we yeah, you were twins. You know, see, so we were we were on a wavelength when it came to art since we were little kids. I mean, you know what I mean, babies. Uh, infancy, yeah. uh, childhood. It was like we were, it was like literally like one guy operating. You know what I mean? It was yeah. like a single mind when it, when we merged together. It's, so I don't know. That's that's not a, that, that's an apocryphal story. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. Well, hey, I just looked at the time and we are at five o'clock, sir. Holy mackerel. That, that wasn't fine. <laughs> so well, it did go fast. It was a good conversation tonight. Cool. Um, so, you know, we're talking about TSO and all that stuff. And uh, even though, you know, there's no new program or anything like that, uh, you and Gene have remained close with, uh, oh, with Paul. Uh, Adam and Ireland yeah. and everybody. And Ireland, Paul's daughter. It, it, and I did an album cover. They're, they're, they're going to put out a album of, of recorded of, of songs that were recorded already, but never been released. So they're doing a special album, and I did a I did a the album cover for that. I'm not sure exactly when that'll be oh, released, cool. but that'll be coming out pretty soon. So awesome! And you know, everybody who's uh, watching now, if anybody catches this, um, wait a minute, let, let me hide the painting for tomorrow. Let me hide, the, hide painting. the painting because Jane's showing up <laughs> right now. All right, but yeah, anybody, yeah, check out the uh, the Trans Siberian Orchestra live stream uh, tomorrow. I'm I'm sure they're going to put on a really really cool show. Yeah. So uh, we'll we'll post. Uh, I think I think we've sent out something of that. Maybe if not, we'll put it on our Facebook pages and Instagram just to remind everybody so people can tune in and and check that out. And I'm going to sign off, sir. And you, uh, Keith, thank you again. Great job. Great talking so to you, man. It's been great. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs>